Hey, I'm Jason Blummer, and I want to talk to you about the value of dogs and puppies. So let me introduce you to Rose. She's our old school family pet. She's been around about 10 years. We love Rose. God, she has awful breath. <laughs> she stinks bad, and she hates people. Anybody that comes near our family, she barks at them, and she acts like a butthole, honestly. She's got a busted, crooked back leg, and her teeth are kind of messed up. The vet told us to brush her teeth. We don't brush dog's teeth, so her teeth are probably going to stay the way they are. I wonder how much you would pay me for Rose. Hmm, that value probably depends. Well, let me introduce you to Jessie. This is my new puppy. She's about a month old, and we wanted a boxer puppy. So she's a boxer, and she cost us about $400. wonder how much you would pay me for Jessie. I paid $400. Well, when we were looking for a boxer puppy, we wanted this fawn-colored look, this brown. There are some white boxers. There were actually some boxers that were closer to our house, uh, and they were actually 300 They were cheaper. But we drove an hour to get Jesse because we valued a certain color. I wonder what you would pay me for Jesse. I can tell you it'll be more than 400 now because um, she still poops in the house sometimes, but not as much as she used to. And she's crate trained, aren't you? She can sit when I give her a treat and we've taken her to the vet. So we've invested a little bit in her. And honestly, we're starting to love her. But do we love her more than Rose? I don't know yet, we're still learning. So again, value is subjective. And I wonder what you would pay me for my dogs. Let me tell you, Rose is busted up, but she's priceless. There's no price for Rose. Now her? If the price is right, I might still sell Jesse. So it's hard to understand what value is. You know what? Let's dive a little deeper into value. I want to bust out some old school flannel boards so we can learn a little bit more about value in your firm. Okay, we were talking about the value of dogs and puppies earlier. Now we're busting out the big bad flannel board. Thank you to Haley and Betsy, and they're going to help me with understanding how value really works. But first, we got to talk about two dudes that came up with two theories of value. Everybody knows this guy. That guy looks like Santa Claus. <laughs> no, an evil Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> evil. That dude's actually Karl Marx. He had, this is a big, long statement, but basically what he said is, the relative values of commodities are determined by the respective quantities or amounts of labor worked up, realized, and fixed in them. What does that mean? I don't know. I have no idea. Basically what he's saying is something's valuable because of what you put into it. But that's not necessarily true. Now, there's a second dude that I dropped. Who's this guy? Do you remember? Carl Minger. Carl Minger. You guys are awesome. He's the founder of Austrian economics. Duh. Well, he sort of looks like he's been in the army and he's way too serious. <laughs> then he got glasses after that. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. He don't care like anything. Carl, you don't care? Well, you know what? Carl disagreed with this Carl. Two Carls. Is that confusing? No. He had a different idea of value. Value is judgment economizing men make about the importance of the goods at their disposal for the maintenance of their lives and well-being. What does that mean? Is that Never weird? Never in a million years I'd figure out it. <laughs> You'll figure it out when you go to school. And then he said, hence value does not exist outside the consciousness of men. So value is where? It's up in your head. He says the value of goods is entirely subjective in nature. Whereas Karl Marx said, it depends on what you put into it. That's how valuable it is. And he said, nope, it's all subjective. It depends on what's in the person's head. Value is about psychology and figuring out what people value. So we came up with a tool on the flannel board called the house of value. Let's bust that out. All right, what comes first on the house of value? Foundation. Yeah. Do you know what this one's called? It is the foundation, but I have a word for it. Alignment. In the house of value, the first step with your customer is aligning with them on the value. What does alignment mean anyway? I don't know, but why is it orange? <laughs> I don't know. That's the color felt I had. I don't know. So anyway, that's the foundation of the house of value. Now, 
we need a wall, right? The first wall is what the company values. What do you think about that? You like it? Now, what the company values, so alignment is about finding if your customer believes what you believe. That's important. Now, the company, what their, what their job is in the house of value, you know what they're supposed to do? State their value. They're supposed to say, we are this valuable. And you know how they do that? Guess. They get customers, maybe? This is part of it. But they state their value with a price. They say, we charge this much. And they do it before they do their service. That's important. Price before you serve people. Now, what's the second wall of the house of value? Hit it, Haley. Customers. Customers. God, you guys are awesome. Are y'all are y'all CPAs? No. Do you run a CPA firm? No. Are you sure? Yes. Yeah, you are awesome at this. I don't know how you know this so well. But so the customer, what's their job in the house of value? You remember? No. Communicating with them? No, almost. You one step ahead of me. Their job is to perceive the value. So let me go over these again. We're building a cool house. Alignment is about finding people that believe what you believe. That's important. The company's job in the house of value is to state the value. You know what the customer's job is? Is to perceive that value. They might. So you can state your value. Let's say I want to sell you some bubble gum for $500. Would you buy it? No. Why not? Well, it's just if it's like a little pack. It's not, I mean, like, it's, it's not that much worth of money just for a little pack of gum. Okay. Well, okay. So you, as my customer, did not perceive that the gum was worth $500, right? So I can say it's $500 all I want, but if my customer does not perceive the value, I've got some problems. I'm not going to be able to sell it. So how do you help them perceive the value in what you're selling? You know, Haley? Communicate. Communicating. The yellow arrow in the house of value is about communicating what you've stated as your value and about what the, comp or what the customer perceives as the value. The communication is how you enhance value. You can inject value into a relationship. And you know what? It might not even be about the tax return you're selling. It might be about the service or the fear that you're taking away or the timeliness that you're doing it. You can create value actually in a relationship. So Betsy, there's one thing missing on my house of value. What is it? The roof. The roof. Dun, dun, dun. You like red for the roof? Well, why is it red? <laughs> it's again, it's the only felt I had. <laughs> it's all I had. So here's what you do. When you've figured out your house of value, you've stated value, you've perceived value, value, the one thing you do to top off your house is service. This is how you prove your value. You know what you're doing here? You're proving the promises you made as a company when you stated your value. What do you think about that? Looks good, right? Yeah. Let me give you an example. Let's say a CPA firm wants to do, um, they want to work for a nice client and they want to do a multi-state, complicated, manufacturing, international conglomerate tax return. What? Have y'all done one of those yet? No. Okay, one day you'll do that, right? Maybe. Maybe. Well, the first thing the company's got to do in serving this is they got to say, Hey, customer, do you believe what we believe? Meaning we're virtual, we work in the cloud, we don't work on paper, uh, we don't work after hours. These are the things we believe. The customer's got to say, okay. Then the company's got to say, for a manufacturing tax return like that, we're going to charge you $15,000. Does anybody pay $15,000 for tax returns? No. no. No? Wow. You know what? I think some people do. Is that crazy? Yes. They're crazy. A company says, a CPA firm says they'll sell a tax return for 15 grand. Now, but they're not done. In that example, the customer's got to say, hmm, yeah, I perceive value in you guys doing that, but maybe not $15,000. I paid 12000 to my last CPA. Are you guys better than he was? And if we're communicating properly, we say, yeah, here's what we do internally to make sure we serve you better. Now, so they said they're going to sell a tax return for 15 grand. That's crazy. That's a lot of money. And the customer says, sold. I'll pay you $15,000 because you should communicate it well. Now what do they have to do? They have to prove. They have to prove it. You're right. What does that mean? That means they actually have to do the tax return. But what if the company, the CPA firm lied and they really can't do 
a manufacturing tax return. Not good. Not good. So the service is how you prove the promises you've made that you can do that tax return. So that's an example of how to use the house of value. Make sure all these aspects are part of your service to your customer. Now, there's something missing on my house of value that you guys need to help me with. What is it? Grass. Grass. Okay. Awesome. Slam some grass on my house. Woohoo! Thanks, Haley and Betsy. You guys are awesome. All right. I wanted to bring you to the top of Greenville, South Carolina, so I could write these value truths in the sky. So thank you for joining me on this journey of value. We did talk about Rose and Jesse. We found out that value is subjective. Somebody might pay for one dog over another. Um, actually, one might be priceless for no good reason. So value is subjective in that nature. And then we got the help of Haley and Betsy to help us with the house of value. That was pretty cool. The house of value is a tool that you can actually use to enhance the value and how you sell your services. Just ignore the police cars in the background. Um, but what I want to do is I want to tell you five great value truths that talk about the subjective nature of value. These are really key, and this is where we're going to summarize all the things that we learned. Depends is number one. No, not that depends. It depends. Value. It just depends. This is the creative part of pricing. So, and this is the uncomfortable part for a lot of accountants. They enter into a relationship and they want to know what is the price for that service. I'm here to tell you, you just can't know. It all just depends on so many different variables in a relationship with you and that customer. So keep that in mind. Lean into that creativity. Lean into the unknown of knowing, you know, how do you determine a price? Sometimes you just can't know. So that's number one. It depends. The second one is you got to stop selling and start aligning. Remember the foundation to the house of value, alignment. What we want to do is find out what do we believe and are we finding customers that believe the same things we believe. Alignment is key to everything. So you got to stop selling your services. Again, ignore the trucks here. So, so what is selling? Selling is when, <laughs> thank you. Just conference goers, just bear with us just one minute. They're having a, a good time. The building's on fire, but don't worry about me. I want to talk about value. So, so one thing you got to remember is you got to stop selling your services and you got to start aligning. So selling is about saying, hey, we'll take anybody in our firm. We'll take anybody. Um, if you've got a pulse and a checkbook, we'll take you. But that's not alignment. That's saying we'll serve anybody when actually you know you can. You know there are people in your firms that are wrong for you. And so you've got to align on beliefs and that will set the stage for you enhancing value uh, further on. So that's the second truth. The third one is influence. Remember that value can be influenced, which is really cool. A client can come to you and go, here's what I want you to do, but you could actually have them leave your firm wanting to do different things. You can actually influence, enhance, actually inject greater value into a relationship with that potential client because of the work you do to communicate. So remember in the house of value, that yellow arrow in the middle, that's where you enhance the value with proper communication between the company and what they value and the customer and what they value. So influence is key. And that's actually the strategic part of your work. It's actually the fun part, but it's the part most firms are not very good at is knowing how to influence value. But that's a key component I want you to get in the things we learn. Number four is price before you work. I mean, y'all, this is how we buy plumbing services and used cars. They figure this out. We can't send a price and an invoice to our clients after we've done the work. We've lost all hope of influencing, injecting, and creating new values for our customer when we do that. So be bold, state your value. Remember, that's what we had to do in the house of value as a company, a firm states their value by boldly stating a price. This is you pricing before your work. You're going to find the greatest, um, the greatest alignment when you do that. And you're going to find clients that are actually happier. The fifth one, fifth one is prove your service, prove your value. And in that, you're actually coming back with a service that's really so mind-blowing and so different than typical firms and competitors. And again, you've already done all the hard work of creatively setting a price, aligning with that customer, 
um, you know, influencing their value, determining the price, stating it up front, guaranteeing that price, taking away their fear of what kind of bill you're going to send them later. And now your service can take over to be the proof of why you price so high. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you for letting me write in the sky. And I just want to say thank you for uh, inviting me to the conference. Sorry I couldn't come in person, but um, there's, there's some other great stuff coming. So uh, if everybody can just stand up. All right. Stand up. Everybody up. All right. We're going to do some jumping jacks. Here we go. Ready? All right. We got we to gotta get everybody going. All right. Here we go. Woo! Everybody's up. Y'all up? Hello? Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Woo! Woo! Crap.